Hi, everyone, and welcome to CBIA's BizCast. This is the first episode in a series of economic development episodes focusing on the local level and with the pandemic and everything that's happened, the good, the bad, and everything in between. I'm joined today with Mayor Laura Hoydick. Welcome. Thank you, Ashley. It's nice to be here. So you've had a longstanding connection with Stratford, and it's one of a really unique town in the state. So if you just want to give us a little bit about your background. So I'm the mayor of Stratford. That's the first thing. Before this, I was uh, the state representative for the 120th district, very connected to CBIA. Um, and before that, or at the same time, I was also the Chamber of Commerce executive director. So uh, Business interests are very important, obviously, not just to the town or the mayor, but for our whole economy and the state of Connecticut. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, COVID-19 has had a huge impact on the business community. And what kind of resources did you utilize or create to help save small businesses on your main street? So we utilized every trick that we could. Um, the state government gave us, you know, some help obviously a lot of help. Uh, after we kind of settled down with, um, with the closures, so the first 90 days was probably the, the most difficult, but we still had the opportunity to have all the construction keep going in the manufacturing, which is a big part of Stratford's um, economy. So that was going, we kept all of our town workers working, we had our essential employees. So there was you know, cash flow that was going through the system, but then we started realizing the smaller businesses, the restaurants, the hair salons, the car dealerships were all really, really struggling. So then uh, through our economic development department and our economic development com commission, we started doing inf infomercial kind of things for them. And also um, every day I was sending out emails to uh, whoever would subscribe and just keep talking about what was happening with the virus, what was happening with the pandemic and um, heads up on, on grant opportunities for small businesses, et cetera. Yeah, so you mentioned restaurants and how did you specifically help restaurants? Because we know that that industry was just devastated by the pandemic. Anything right. so, in terms of just funding or local permitting changes? Yeah, so at the end it was more funding, but the first thing that we had to do before we had access to the funds, because remember CARES didn't come out right in the beginning it was when the governor lifted uh, the ability for the restaurants to operate even on takeout. Then we started producing um, lists of all Stratford restaurants, their menus, takeout options. Um, so we advertised that extensively. We did a lot of small business grants. We took our CDBG money. So it wasn't just restaurants specifically for that, but we um, gave out $270,000 worth of grants in the meantime, before that happened, though, we, you know, we were dealing with PPP. And so we had one of our town attorneys who was specifically working with any business and helping them through the process, getting them through to a bank or a financial institution to get the, and apply for the PPP. And we were doing that with all kinds of um, businesses. So it was anything, anything that we could think of to make sure that they had all the information they had. And even if they needed help applying for PPP, because some businesses didn't have the capabilities of you know, even going online to, to say to a certain extent, we would help them there too. Yeah, so the restaurant community and a lot of these industries, they are the backbone of not only the economic culture, but just the community in general, and they provide a lot of supports. So how does community development impact economic development for Stratford? Well, when you think about the community development, so many of our Stratford businesses are very generous to our charities and our nonprofits. So they were also in this whole loop of maybe not having a reduced workforce, needing a food source because we had a, a lot of um, food insecurities. Remember unemployment wasn't really working really well in the beginning. So, so we knew that people not only needed money but they might need just the staples of how to, how to get by until, until um, the, the grant money for our unemployment was, was flowing. So what we, we did was, besides using town resources, we kind of made people aware of other resources that were available to them. And um, when they were able to open up, even in a limited basis, outside dining, those kind of things, we um, have a great system in the town of Stratford uh, called, um, which is an online permitting 
process. And um, through that, all of our departments were able to expedite these permits very, very quickly. And um, that helped the businesses start to run and being able to start making some money and hiring some people back. That's great. And technology has been such a big focus with the pandemic because it's really changed the lives of many people. So have you guys been using social media more, Twitter, you know, you did the video production and you said you had a whole system to get the word out and then updating permitting process. Um, what else have you done in terms of that technology side? So as I was mentioning the online uh, permitting, that's a software program called Viewpoint. That was already operating. So we utilized that. All of our um, operations in town halls, you could pay your bills online, you could access your land records online. So we were using as much as we possibly could. And ironically, thank goodness, we had just updated our voicemail system. So our voicemails would transfer into emails. So even if we were working remotely, we were able to log on, get our emails and be able to call constituents back. So the, that part really worked, um, worked beautifully. Wow, that's... It's amazing what technology can do nowadays. So what did you think was the most beneficial in terms of state and federal support? Was it just the straight dollars? Was it various state programs that helped out municipalities? What was it that really got the best bang for the buck? Um, the first thing that I think was the most important and it didn't cost anything is that the governor stepped back and said, municipal leaders run your town. That by him doing that that'll, and giving us that, um, that ability and not having to have everything so constricted and controlled was a mistake because you've got 169 towns that are all so different. So towns two, two uh, towns away were, might have closed their parks for whatever reason. We kept ours open. So there were certain things that he allowed us to do, thank goodness. The grant money obviously was, was perfect. The providing of PPE for our first responders was critical. Um, our health department was, you know, they were the leader in this. Our health department works on a regional basis with all the other health departments in the area. Those health directors worked in lockstep together. So we had continuity of service and information and that was critical. But it was really the information piece of getting it out to the public about what was happening because you hear so many things on, um, on any kind of media and you don't know what to believe. And that continuity of the governor's message and all the municipal leaders' message, I think, um, calmed everybody down a little bit because there was a lot of anxiety going on with this. For sure. Yep. You know, in terms of uniqueness and being able to have that local control, tell us a little bit about the Stratford Strong Task Force. Yeah, so our task force worked in two areas. It was human ser services and community services, and then also business services. But both sides worked together really well collaboratively, so we could serve more than one master. And um, we used the CDBG money for businesses, and we also used it to provide uh, grant money for our feeding programs. We worked really, really closely with the schools, and that's um, a really important component. So our health department, and our school nurses worked so well together about, and, and shared services all the time. Um, our superintendent was very supportive and she, what she did was she took the whole food service program from the schools and we were able to spread it out throughout the entire town so people wouldn't go hungry. That was probably one of our, our biggest concerns is that people couldn't go to the grocery store. Remember, everything was kind of shut down or you could only go certain times. and. It was, um, it, was, it was a little crazy. It's hard to remember back 15 months ago, but it was a little crazy out there. Yeah, getting toilet paper and just peanut butter seemed like a Herculean yeah. task, just it's to say <laughs> the now where it's, everything's restocked again, which is great. But was that just an example of a great public-private partnership between local government and nonprofits within the community? The Stratford Strong? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and again, our community has, we are very fortunate, has worked really well together for decades. Um, we had had a tragedy of a multifamily fire. It was 30 units um, two years ago. And all of these groups worked together really well then. Public safety, um, our community services, some of our nonprofits. So we kind of were learning how to get along and really what our strengths were. And boy, did we um, employ those during the pandemic. Yeah. You know, the pandemic has had a lot of negative and horrible consequences 
Um, but I think for a lot of people, there have been some pluses from the pandemic and things we can learn from. So are there any policies or procedures that you put into place that you want to keep around after the pandemic is long gone? Yeah, as a matter of fact, yes, we, um, we extended the governor's executive orders here uh, for the outside dining piece, which was really um, beneficial and still is to our restaurants. And um, the virtual meetings, I thought were a really great um, ad for people that don't really wanna come to a town hall or come to a meeting, but they can you know, just log in and, and listen to the meeting. So that, was, um, so that was really great too. And then the whole utilizing of technology and accepting of the general public that they could do things online or pick up the phone instead of having to come and do something in person, that worked out really well for us as well. Yeah, it's huge. And the videos that you guys produced about Stratford are just amazing. How did, did you decide to do that on a whim or was it COVID related or just a way to get the message out that Stratford is here and come businesses, come to the community, so move to Stratford? The, the Economic Development Department and Commission had started this video um, series before COVID. And it was about, these are the assets of Stratford, Come, come live with us, come play with us, come eat with us, you know, all those kind of things. And then we realized the commission had a little extra money and they said, we've got to get this out for businesses. And each business segment, you know, we did hair salons and barbershops. We did um, the car industry because you don't think about it, but you know, the car industry, people, people weren't driving. So they weren't getting their oil changed or they weren't getting their car serviced or all of these things that were happening. That, that, so their industry was slowly drying up and that wasn't, wasn't great. We did, obviously we did the restaurants, we did um, other services too, you know, about the, the, dog, the pet grooming services. I mean, one of the great things about COVID that happened for COVID was there was no, no surplus pets, but, you know, animals, no rescue. You, you couldn't find a pet to rescue anymore. Um, so that was a, a good thing. And the other good thing you asked before um, about COVID was that we got reacquainted with our natural assets in our communities because we couldn't travel we couldn't go on vacation to disney world or want something else so you had to figure out what was fun and what was kind of cool to do in your own own hometown or in your region yeah definitely i know a lot of people who have gotten new puppies in the last year and a half a lot of people who have discovered hiking and trails and mm -hmm. connecticut beaches for the first time are you looking to up the tourism component of your budget or what, are you looking to do any of that since people do now have to do more of the staycations in Connecticut? Yeah, and you know what's funny is that we're going to have two or three more tourist sites after COVID than we had before. You know, we um, the Connecticut Air and Space Center just opened up, um, which, you know, features uh, Stratford's strong aviation and military history. The Veterans Museum is going to open up this fall. Um, we're hoping the African American Collections uh, Museum will open uh, shortly too. So those those three are highlights among the other, you know, historic structures and museums that we already have. So yes, come to Stratford, come visit us, come play with us, come uh, come go to our our 400 acre forest, and we have a dog park that just started. They just well the organization was together before, but the dog park was built just at the beginning of COVID. And I can't tell you how many people were spending time there, meeting new friends, just canines as well as human, and uh, having a really great time and using that asset. Yeah, I'll definitely borrow all of my friends' new puppies in <laughs> the dog park now. But thank you so much for being with us today and sharing Stratford and all the wonderful things it has to offer and the challenges you overcame. And hopefully things are going to get better, brighter, and take a trip down to Stratford. Well, so. thanks, Ashley. You know. We were successful because we did it together. And we didn't always agree, but we still did it together. And that's the strength of our community. I'm really proud of Stratford. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.